Hi, I'm Andy, and welcome to this short video on how to use the SA9083 meter to check a customer's drop cable. Let's assume you're at the DP testing back towards the master socket in the customer's home. In the next few minutes, I'll show you how to carry out all the following tests. This is called ballistic testing, but you probably knew that anyway. Now, what was that first test again? Oh yeah, that's it. The first thing to do is to check that the meter's working, that the leads aren't broken, and that the battery's okay. Plug in the leads, red to red, black to black, and green to green. We need to set the dial to ohms. And then short the red and black leads together. If the leads and meter are OK, the needle will move right across the scale. The battery has to have enough power to move the needle all the way over to that blue section at the end. If the needle doesn't go that far, change the battery. Finally, you'll need to check the green lead. So, swap the green with the black or the red, it doesn't make any difference, and repeat the test. If it fails this time, there's a fair chance that the green lead is faulty. But, as you can see, ours is fine. Our meter is working great. Before we connect it to any drop cable though, switch it off. This will protect it if there is a fault in the drop cable. So, now it's time to connect the meter. Now you only have to do this once to do all the tests, so make sure you get it right. Connect the black lead to the blue wire. The way I always remember it is the three B's. B leg, blue wire, black lead. The red lead to the white A leg and the green lead to earth. Wherever you're testing from, make sure you get a good earth connection. This is really important. That's it. All ready to start testing. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're not going to go into details of how many volts or how many ohms you might see, just as a rule of thumb, if you see the needle move, there's a fault. There is one exception to this rule, but we'll cover that later. Now, if you do find a fault, the fault could actually be in the drop cable, one of the sockets, or even a piece of customer's equipment. That's what you'll need to investigate. So, here we are at the DP. The first test we must do every time is to check for AC voltage. If the needle moves, that means there's an AC voltage present. You must stop testing and find out what's causing this problem. If you carry on, you'll probably damage the meter. But there's no reading in this case, so let's carry on. Switching the dial onto BAT B checks for any battery contact on the B leg. The meter shouldn't read any voltage, but if it does, you'll need to see where that's coming from before going any further. To check for battery contact on the A leg, press and hold the BA change button. Same thing, if the needle moves, you'll need to investigate where that voltage is coming from before moving on. Switching the dial to Earth B checks for any earth contact on the B leg. Again, you shouldn't read anything here, but if you do, that's a fault. 
To check for an earth on the A leg, just press and hold the BA change button. Same thing, if the needle moves, there's a fault somewhere. This test checks if there's any contact between the A and the B legs. In other words, a high resistance loop. Switching the dial to ohms times 100 checks for contact across the two legs. Right, here's the exception to the rule I mentioned earlier. You might see the needle jump or kick, but ignore that for now. What we're looking for in this test is if the needle moves and stays there. If it does, there's a fault. Simple. To check for a polarised loop, press and hold the BA change button. Again, ignore any kicks for now. Same thing, if the needle moves and stays there, there's a fault. OK, let's get back to those kicks. These can tell you a lot. Normally, these come from the ringing capacitor inside the master socket. So, if your drop cable is connected to a master socket, expect a kick every time you press the BA change button. If the drop cable is not connected to a master socket and you still get a reasonably big kick, it could be you have a fault. You'll soon get the idea. This test checks that there's no breakdown in the insulation of the B leg and the A leg. Turn the dial to mega ohms. This checks the insulation of the B leg. And pressing and holding the BA change button checks the insulation of the A leg. Remember, any significant on scale reading will indicate a fault. The final test is just to make sure there are no broken wires or dodgy joints in either leg of the drop cable. If there were any breaks, the likelihood is you would have noticed something for now. But let's just check the continuity of each leg, just to be certain. To do this, you'll need to disconnect the drop cable from the master socket and connect the A and B legs together. Back at the DP, set the dial to ohms loop and you should get something close to a full scale deflection. If the needle doesn't move, it looks like there's a break in the cable. If the needle moves part way across the scale, there's probably a dodgy connection somewhere. Time to fault find again. So that's it. Seven tests to help you check a drop cable. Isn't it so quick and easy? Let's just run through it once more. All done in about two minutes. That's it. See you next time.